So first, what is a mechanism? A mechanism is an assembly of bodies connected to manage forces and movements in the machine. In Automation Studio, Mechanism Manager allows you to create mechanical links between bodies, fluid power actuators, to simulate their kinematic and dynamic interactions. Let's see the terminologies of the Mechanism Manager first. In Mechanism Manager, we use four terms to create a mechanism. Those are frame, node, body, and joints. First, what is a frame? A frame is a fixed body or a point in a mechanism. A node is a point where a mechanical joint can be made and or a force can be applied. A body is a part of the machine acted upon by the actuators or the loads and are attached to the frame. When we say body, it is a physical body of the machine in real life. And joints. A joint is a point where connection between two links are designed to provide desired movement, for example, sliding movement or rotational movement. So now let's see like what are all the steps involved in creating a simple mechanism. Basically, we have categorized in five steps in creating a mechanism. The first step is to define the frame and add nodes to the frame. Then second step is to create bodies and add nodes to the bodies. And the third step is to add fluid power actuators to the mechanism. Now you have frame, bodies, and fluid power actuators. And the next step is to create linkages between frame, bodies, and fluid power actuators. The final step is to manage loads. Mechanism Manager now allows you to put a load at any point in the mechanism. For example, you can apply load at this point, or here, or this point, to see the effect of the mechanism in the fluid power systems. Now let's move to the Automation Studio software and see how we can create a simple mechanism. So ahead of time, I've created a simple circuit to show you how to create a mechanism. So as you can see here, uh, this simple circuit contains a linear actuator with a proportional directional control valve, uh, which is controlled by a joystick. And also we have a simple pressure relief valve, as well as a fixed displacement pump. So if you see the left side, we have this a simple boom lift mechanism. This is the example which we are going to create for today's webinar. So if you see in this diagram here, I have already created the structure. This is the lift boom of this uh, machine. And we have a fluid power actuator here. And there are some properties associated with the fluid power actuator is also shown here. And there are two fixed points here, 0, 0, and 0, 0,250. So one thing I want to stress here is that before creating a mechanism manager, it is very important that you set up all the properties of the linear actuator or other actuators. Because once you create and associate a mechanism with these linear actuators, you will not be able to change or modify the properties of this actuator. So first, let's, let's set up the component properties of this linear actuator. How do we do it? It's very simple, you just have to double click on it. I'll just move a little bit to the right so that I'll be able to see this actual properties here. So now I'm going to set up the cylinder stroke, which is 200 millimeters. By default, you can see here there is a 200 millimeter stroke. And there is a rod diameter, which is 50 millimeters, and the piston diameter, 100 millimeter. Now I have set up all the properties here. 
and now I will close this component properties here. So the reason why I have all the coordinates set up already set up is that this will allow me to configure the mechanism very quickly and very fast. So this will save a lot of time in creating a mechanism. So it is always better that you have a simple mechanism with all the coordinates in your hand. So now, how to access the mechanism manager? First, go to the fluids tab. Then you can see here there is a mechanism manager. You can click on it. As soon as I click on it, you can see here there is a mechanism manager window pops up. In this window, you can add a mechanism here to this project or delete a mechanism using this button. So now I'm going to add a new mechanism to this project by clicking this button here. So when you see here, as soon as I click on this add mechanism, you can notice two things here. The first one is the mechanism viewer window automatically opens up. This mechanism viewer window will allow you to monitor the mechanism that you are creating or it will allow you to view the mechanism that you have already created. The second thing is in this left pane of this mechanism manager dialog box there is a frame which is default. So for any mechanism we need to have a standard fixed frame or a point. So that is standard over here. We can also modify the name of the mechanism by by accessing this identification tab. So let's call this one as a boom this boom lift mechanism. So now as soon as I enter it here, the name modifies in this description box over here. As I mentioned it before, the first step in creating a mechanism is to define a frame and add nodes to the frame. So now what we are going to do is we are going to define the frame as a first step. For that to do, you just have to click on the frame. As soon as you click on the frame, you can see here there are two tabs in the right window opens up. The first one is the data tab, the second tab is the mechanical nodes tab. This mechanical nodes tab will allow you to add, delete, copy or paste the mechanical nodes that you are creating. So first, according to our example here, I'll just move this one bit to the right. So according to our example here, we have two fixed frames here, one at this point and one here. So I'm going to add two nodes to the frame. The first node, by clicking here node one, and second node. You can also rename this node by going to the identification tab here. So let's say cylinder, I'll just open this one here and I'll just say cylinder attachment point. And then I go up here in the node one and then I say where we are going to attach the body of our mechanism. So I will say like body attachment point. So now you see here the name changed here as well, body attachment point and the cylinder attachment point. Now what I'm going to do means basically here in the mechanism viewer here you can see the points as well. You can also zoom the mechanism. As you configure one by one frame, body and the joints, you can keep on monitoring using this mechanism viewer as well. So now I'm going to transfer these points 
to the node points here in this one here. So first is the cylinder attachment point, which is here basically, which is 0, 0. And all dimensions are in millimeter, just for reference here. So first point is 0, 0. I will leave it as it is. And the second point is the body attachment point. I select this one. And I wanted to change it to 0, 0,250. So I will just go to the technical characteristics. Here I'm just going to enter 0 in the x coordinate and 250 in the y coordinate. You can also change the units by accessing to the right a small tab here. Meters, centimeters, millimeters, inches, etc. So I will leave it to millimeters here. So now we have set up two points in this one. To view those two points in the mechanism viewer, you can just click on the zoom mechanism here. So now we can see here the first point, which is the body attachment point. And when I select the second point, it automatically highlights here in the mechanism viewer. So, so far what we have done, we have select the, selected the frame and we have configured the nodes here. Now, the second step is to create bodies and add nodes to the bodies. So before creating bodies, I just, if you see here, in the left side of the mechanism manager, in the left pane, you can see here there is add body icon and add joints, different types of joints. For example, pivot join, a slider join, and a rigid links between two bodies. And also you can add external load to the joints. So now we are going to add a body to this mechanism here. The body is the boom lift of our mechanism in our example. So I will say add a body. As soon as I add a body, you can see here a body icon appears here with a small question mark to its left. Basically, this means that this body is not linked to any mechanism or is not configured properly. When you have a check mark, it's correctly configured, just for identification here. So now, in our example, in the body, we have three points here, one, two, and three. So I'm going to create three nodes to this body here. Let's say one, two, and three. And I will rename the nodes according to the requirements and I just say like node one we will say a frame attachment point. And then I go to the second point which is where we are going to attach our rod in the cylinder, rod of the cylinder. So let's say rod attachment point. Now let's go to the third node and we will say that, let's say if you wanted to have some external load acting at this point here, so we will call it as external load point. So now we have set up the three points here, but still if you see in the coordinate system, it's still 0, 0, 0, 0, and 0, 0. So now I'm going to transfer these coordinate points to this body points here. So first, let's select the frame attachment point. Once again, it's the same way. Go to the technical characteristics, and then set up the points as we see here. So 0 comma 250. As soon as I put this one, you can see here it automatically moves, the point moves to the top. And let's say the second point I'm selecting, it's minus 550 comma 250. So now zoom mechanism, you can see here the second point is here. And I will say the third point now, which is this one, minus 1100 comma 250. So now you see here there is a three points created but still we don't have the same shape as this 
body frame here. So why is it like that? This is because still the center of mass of this body is located at the origin. If you look at it here, the center of mass is still located at 0, 0. We have to move this one to more realistic position. So let's say I will move it to the second node point and I'll select the center of mass, go to the technical characteristics and I say like minus 550 comma 250. So now if you see here, you can see the straight line as like a lift. In our example, we have created this mechanism here. You can also rename the body by accessing the data tab. I'll just go back once again here and I save this one as boom. And you can also change the appearance in the mechanism by changing the color here and also line thickness. Let's say I put it to 12 and to be more realistic. So now you see here that we have configured our body of the machine here. So we have configured the frames and we have configured our body in the mechanism manager. Now the third step is to add the actuators to this mechanism manager. How do we add a mechan actuator to this mechanism manager? It's very easy as like before you just have to drag and drop this linear actuator into this left window here. It will automatically be added to our mechanism manager. So when I add a linear actuator you see there are two points, a cylinder and a rod and there is a small internal link. This internal link is created because we have an internal link between the cylinder and rod here, so which will be created automatically so you don't have to worry about it. Now when I click on the cylinder, you can see here automatically we have by default three nodes is there. The first one is cylinder reference and the center of mass and the cylinder fixture. What are the three spots? What are these three points here? So I'll just show you a quick example here. So if you see here in this cylinder here, this is the origin of the cylinder by default. So this is where 0, 0 is. And this is where the center of mass is located. And if I just move a bit closer here, so by default you can see a 250 center of mass is located at 250 comma 0 which is basically 250 comma 0 in the y direction. And the third point is the cylinder fixture. The cylinder fixture is the point where you physically attach the cylinder to a machine. So we are not going to attach at the origin so basically we will attach a small point behind so that's where we have it minus 100 comma 0 which is located at this point here. This is where you fix your cylinder. So basically this is how these three points are created just to aid us to create the mechanism quickly. In the same way if I access the rod, we have three points, a rod reference, a center of mass and the rod fixture. What are these three points here in the rod reference? So I'll just grab this one here. So if you see here in the rod reference, this is the local origin of this rod. And this is where the center of mass is located here. So it's 250 comma 0. And if you just look at it, the rod fixture in this one, it's this point. So from the origin, From the origin to this rod, fix, rod fixture, it's 500 millimeters comma zero. It's located at this point. So, for example, in your case, if it's too long, the rod is too long, you can modify the length after coming here, and you can adjust it according to your requirements. So now, 
Now we have three points created and we have added actuator to this mechanism. First we created a frame and added nodes to this mechanism. The second we created a body and added nodes to this body here using mechanism manager. And the third step we have added the fluid power actuators to it. So now what is the next step here? The next step is now we have defined all these three things and now the next step is to create linkages by defining joints between these two points. First let's say I want to create link between this frame and the body. If you look at the in our mechanism viewer we have only like a created body and the frame and we have added the cylinder but we haven't created any links so far. So the step is to create link. How do we create a link? It's very easy. If you look at here, add a pivot join, a slider, or rigid link joins. This is how you create a link. First, I'm going to add a pivot join. As soon as I add a pivot join here, you can see here there are changes in the right side of this mechanism manager. First point is the first node. Basically, it is asking for which node you wanted to create the link, the pivot link. First, I will select the body and frame attachment point. So we have named this boom frame attachment point. I will select this one. As soon as I select it, it will show all the possible points where you can fix this frame attachment point of the boom. So now I'm just going to click on this frame of the body attachment point. So now I have selected to this two points and I'm going to validate this point by selecting this one by applying this check mark here. So when I apply the check mark, you can see here automatically there is a small link created. You can also zoom in. So you can see here there is a small blue color appearing here. So which basically indicates that we have created link at this point. And you can also see here it's correctly configured. This pivot join and there is also small check mark here available here. So the next step. The next step is to create a links between the cylinder and the frame as well as the rod and the body. So for that I'm going to add another pivot join. So now you see here another pivot join is added and the same way I'm going to select the cylinder fixture in the first node and as soon as I select all the points where you can attach this cylinder fixture is shown here in the second node window here. So now I'm going to attach this point to this frame cylinder attachment point so I'll select these two ones and I validate this selection. As soon as I validate it you can see there's a small selection appears but still you don't see the cylinder up here because you did not configure the rod. So now we have to attach the rod to this body. When you attach the rod to this body you can see here the fluid power actuator automatically shows here. So now I'm going to add another fiber joint and I just go down. You can see here there is a rod fixture. So I select this one. In the second node point it automatically shows that there is only one point where you can attach this rod. So which is basically this point here. So I will select this one, I apply this one. As soon as I validate this one you can see here a small message is created which basically is telling you that the extension of the cylinder has been set to 2.08. This is because of the physical constraints of the mechanism. So I press OK in this one here. So if you see here in this one, all these values are now constrained here. Correctly configured, configured, and all these values are validated. And in the mechanism viewer, if you see here, the mechanism is created as per our example. So now that we have set up our example here. Let's see like if this is the mechanism that we wanted to have exactly. So I'll just close this one. 
I'll go down and I will run the simulation now to see like the mechanism that we created is exactly what we require. So I'll just say normal simulation here. And I'm going to control the joystick over here. So as soon as I, you see here, there is a fluctuation in the mechanism. Why do we have this fluctuation in this ones here? Because we did not properly constrain all this linkages here. So now let's go back to the mechanism to fix all the constraints properly. So now I'm going to click on the fluid and in the fluid manager, mechanism manager. So now I have selected this one to set up a constraint. First, I need to select the point where I wanted to set up a constraint. So let's select the pivot one joint because this is where we have the problem. So we have like the fluctuations back and forth there. So I will select the first point, pivot one. So it's highlighted here. And after that, when you go down to the join properties, and there's a technical characteristics available where you can set up your angular damping, stiffness, or free angle values if you require. And the initial angle basically represents the initial position of this body, so which is set to zero degree now. And next, we go down to the operating conditions. This is where exactly you set up your constraints of the mechanism. So the first one is the joint limit behavior. So here it's by default it's ignored. Now I'm going to change it to stop. So now we are going to set up the angle constraints for this pivot joint here. So I will say the minimum angle is minus 80 degree and the maximum angle is 0 degree. Why did I say 0 and minus 80 degree? 0 degree is the initial angle of the body that we set up here. So that's why I'm saying it's, this is the maximum limit to which the pivot can move and the max minimum angle is minus 80 degree. Basically, when you have the clockwise rotation, it's going to be minus, and anti-clockwise is positive convention. So I put a minus 80 degree so that the body can move up to minus 80 degree and come back to zero degree. So now we have set up our operating conditions here. Then I will close the mechanism and I will see like if it is set up properly. I'll go to the simulation here, normal simulation, and I joystick and I move this one. Now, if you see here, automatically it stops at that point at minus 80 degrees, and it comes down to zero degree here. So now the mechanism is set up properly according to our requirements. So now we wanted to analyze the circuit. Why do we need a mechanism manager here? This is why do we need a mechanism manager is because we can set up, previously we used to add loads to the cylinder separately, so which will be acted only at the rod end. Now with this mechanism manager, what you can do means you can set up a complete mechanism of the machine and you can apply load at any point, anywhere. So the effect of this complete load is taken into account in the hydraulic system. So now, let's analyze the circuit first. So for analyzing the circuit, I'm just going to add a simple measuring instrument for now, a node measuring instrument and I pick one of these rod end, by piston end, I see pressure in bar and a rod inside a pressure. We have set up two pressure measuring instruments at two ends to see what effect, what is the pressure required to lift this boom here. 
So now I will do the slow motion simulation here just to see the how much pressure it requires to lift the cylinder. So as soon as I move, you can see here, it requires somewhere between like 0 to 10 bar pressure to lift the cylinder. So let's say I wanted to add external load to this point and see what effect it has on the cylinder. For that, I will once again go back and access the mechanism manager. Click on the mechanism manager here. And as I said, there is an add external load tab here. You can click on it. So as soon as you add, this also has question mark. Basically, this is saying that the load is not correctly defined. So now we are going to define the load. You will select the point where you wanted to apply the load. Let's say I wanted to apply a load at this point here, so which is body and the external load. I'm going to look for body boom and the external load point. I'll select this one. And under this load properties, you can go to the technical control characteristics. This technical control characteristics, you can see there is X active force and there is a Y active force. And also you can apply a torque acting on this mechanism at this point. So let's say I wanted to apply a load of 1000 kilograms at this point here. So I'll just say 1000. And you have to have, remember that the convention is same. When it's moving from top to bottom, it's the negative direction. And from here, it's positive direction in the Y. And positive X direction is here. And the negative X direction is this side. Let's say we apply load in the negative Y direction. So I'm just going to say minus 1000 deca Newton. You can also change the units here. So now I have applied the load, selected the point. We have to validate it. You just validate it by the selection. And then I close this one here. So let's see what effect this load has on this mechanism. Go to the simulation, a slow motion simulation here. Change this actuator here. So now you see here it requires like 65 to 70 bar load and it's still not enough to lift this boom. So in order to set up we can just access the cracking pressure and we can increase the pressure so that you can optimize the circuit in much better way. So let's say like let's put it 200 bar. It's still not enough, so I'll just increase it to 234, so you can see here it's now standardly configured. So this is how you can create a mechanism, and you can apply loads at any point in the system here. You can either apply load at this point or here. If you wanted to apply a load, you have to create your own nodes, and you can apply node here as well at any point, and you can run the simulation, and you can see the effect of those things in the mechanism as well. So previously we used to add load curves to see the effect of this mechanism. So if I just open the home tab and I open one of the cylinders here, if you see here previously we used to go to the cylinders tab and access force curves. Here we just add some loads to this point here. So like if you wanted to see the effect of this roll of the cylinder, we use to add force curves. And now with the mechanism manager, this allows you to set up the load. So automatically it will take the force curves by itself. If I access the this cylinder which is we have created and associated with the mechanism manager, you can see here now the force curve is currently disabled. So this allows you to save a lot of time in setting up the force curves so and then you can use it very quickly. So this is how you can use the mechanism manager.
and the steps. To wrap up with the presentation, I just wanted to go back again. So then after I will wrap up, we can go, go through the questions that you may have. So if you see here, once again, go getting back to the normal presentation here. So the first, we have defined the frame and added nodes to the frame as you see, and then we have created the bodies and added nodes to the bodies. Then the third step, we have dragged and dropped the linear actuator to the mechanism. And the fourth step, we have linked all these three together, like frames, bodies, and the fluid power actuators by defining their joints. Then we have added some loads to see the effect of the loads in the mechanism manager. OK. so. Now we have done it. So if you have any questions, please feel free to raise your hand. Or you can ask your questions here at this point. So you can ask your questions here, or you can click this button to raise your hand for the questions. Okay, here we have a question. So, Eric, I think I turned on your uh, speaker phone. You can uh, ask for a question here. Okay. Yeah, I was wondering if that in the mechanical manager there, if that is purely a visual, or if you're able to select your points through that interface as opposed to the other one, to where it was just text. No, this is uh, you're talking, uh, Eric, about the viewer. If I in that place? Correct. Yeah. Are you able to select points in there, or is that just a reaction to the selection you make in the other box? Reaction. This is only a viewer. That's why we really insist at this point uh, to have a really, really, uh, a really uh, good practice, or that you go step by step. This is just to visualize the effect of what you configure here. So you cannot drag and drop anything here by now. Uh, soon, uh, Eric, uh, Automation Studio will get its own 3D editor. Uh, this is in the upcoming version 6.1. And with the 3D editor, uh, not at the, the, the first release, but soon after, we will make this be filled by the 3D editor. So soon, you will be able to configure the mechanism right by uh, a 3D environment. Uh, but by now, this is only a viewer. So you need to go step by step, as explained in the presentation, to make sure you will be able to have a good mechanism. OK, is it answering your question, Eric? Yes, that does. Thank you. Uh, any other questions? Yes, Pankaj, go ahead. I have turned on your microphone. Now you can ask your question. OK, let, let us go through some questions that have been uh, asked. OK, so there is, there is Rick that asked uh, a question regarding the stop swash. Uh, let me, uh, Rick, unmute you. Here we go, uh, Rick. Can you explain a little bit more the question you have? Yes. Uh, in my application, I want to make a mechanism that is going to simulate a, a boom cylinder. Yes. I want to extend and retract, and I want to measure the function time. So I, I need to have a stopwatch added, if that's possible, so that I can hit and start the mechanism, and the stopwatch will start, and I'll get accurate function times. 
Yes, so there is a different way of uh, doing uh, doing what we call in automation to do a snapshot. Okay? Okay. If you go in the simulation tab, you will be able to trigger a snapshot manually. Okay? So as you do that, you will have a snapshot that will be that will be created that will appear in your project explorer. Yeah, let me open it. Here we go. That will open here. So anytime you will be able to start the simulation from that snapshot. Uh, okay, so this is the first way to, to really freeze the simulation at a certain point. If you want to activate the snapshot after a, uh, uh, some time, as you seem to, uh, to ask, okay, correct me if I'm wrong, you can go in Project Properties and you will be able Okay, sorry, there's a lot of window here. You will be able in the project properties to activate a delayed snapshot. So you start the simulation and you can activate it after five seconds, after one minute, and so on. Okay. Okay? Is yeah. that what you are searching for? Okay, uh, that's to delay a, a, uh, a time. I, w I want to measure the the full time that it, the mechanism takes to go from start to finish. Ah, but this this is easier. You just maybe you're not aware. We do have a plotter in Automation Studio. Yes. This plotter is is made to calculate anything regarding the time function. So if I take the cylinder that you have in your boom cylinder, you drag and drop it in the plotter. And it allows you to measure the speed, the position, and the, the time it will take to fully retract and extend. So you select what you want to measure. Okay, okay speed, acceleration. Yeah. And you will be able to, as you activate your mechanism, to see the evolution based on time of uh, any things you have in the hydraulic. Okay, that answers my question. Thank you. Okay, thanks, uh, Rick. Many, many other uh, questions. So let us go uh, step by step. There's many people that uh, OK, so Rick, you are mute back. Uh, Pankaj, you, you still have a question. We tried. Uh, let us try to, uh, to unmute you. So we'll tell you when, whenever. Okay, so Pankaj, you are on mute. Ask your question, or okay, let me uh, read your question. What does mean the x y value while applying external load? So if you go in the mechanism manager, you do have in the load an x y. So this will be the direction of the force. As you know, in 2D, this will be three coordinates for a force. One in X, one in Y, and one in Z, a torque or a, a wrench that can be applied. So basically, this is what uh, this means. You can apply a force in different direction okay, for more uh, realism. So that's it. this is what these x, y means. In that case, you see that we have a force of minus 1,000 dkN in a y value. So this force will be applied from the top to the bottom. It okay? will act exactly as a load in the mechanism that you see here. This force will be applied from the top to the bottom of the screen, acting like a gravity. OK? So. Question answered. Uh, other question from uh, Marek. Let me unmute you, uh, Marek. Good morning, Marek. Good morning. Oh, well, your question uh, is: question. Is it possible to analyze mechanism yeah. with motor somehow? Uh, at this moment, uh, what you will be able to do 
will be to actuate okay, some uh, that link the uh, the speed with the mechanism. Uh, but by now it is more cylinder uh, things to to link cylinders together. Uh, the next development will be to add uh, the motors. So there is emulation to link these motors, but it, it will not be as straightforward as it is uh, as it is for a cylinder. So this will be in the uh, upcoming step, uh, Marek. Great, great, because it is it is interesting uh, in inertia point of view, etc. To analyze motors also. Yes, absolutely. Uh, the m main request that we were having were, were first to be able to link the cylinders through mechanism, uh, but we keep having more and more requests uh, regarding the uh, including the the motor. Uh, if I uh, get you a couple of R and D plan as well, we will also be able to link valve in this mechanism to really create a full mechanism including more and more hydraulic and also electrical components. Uh, to be able to link them in a full, uh, full dynamic environment. By now, we uh, we started by uh, simple double acting cylinders only. Great, thank you. Okay. So, Marek, you're mute back. No, no more question. Uh, so last chance. If you have a question, do not hesitate. Okay. So I guess uh, if you have any questions uh, further, you can also send us email uh, to our support at samictech.com and. Uh, Uh, what I'm going to do is actually, I'm going to put this presentation uh, up in our website, so you will have access to this uh, webinar as well. So when you wanted to have reference or you want to share it with your colleagues, you can go to our website and you can access it at this location here. 